Hi guys, alright. I am beyond frustrated right now. Um, and I really, I can't be frustrated <laughs> at my high risk doctor. Um, but let me bring you guys up to speed because I know some of you guys are not friends with me on Facebook, but this time I sh will remember to link it. Um, I was at work and I just, from having, you know, miscarriages that, and I know a lot of you other women that have gone through, um, reoccurring pregnancy loss, you know, anytime you feel like a little, like, wetness, you always check, or at least I do, I always check. So I went to the bathroom, you know, and I, I it was assuming it was just going to be, you know, CM, because it's what it's always been, and it was red. Um, it wasn't like a couple of drops, it was like red, and... So I, I just remind myself, okay, you've had the bleeding before, just take a deep breath, call the high-risk doctor. So I called him and he said, he was up at the, the big, big hospital that's in the, uh, in Massachusetts. Um, so he said, just go to the hospital, just go to the ER. He said, let them know that you have spoken to me. He's like, cause they can, he's like, they'll get your blood work and things like that. He's like, so that way at least I have, you know. He's like, by the time I get to you, at least something's been started. He's like, if not, he said, you know, they would have, he's like, they probably are going to do an ultrasound. He's like, but I just want to see those results. Um, so I get there and I would have to end up with the worst ER doctor I've ever met. My nurses were wonderful. Um, but I told, I, you know, went into the room and they weren't that busy. I was surprised. Um, but they... He said, well, if you're miscarrying, you're going to miscarry. There's nothing we can do about it. And it's like that, duh, I know there's nothing you can do. I just want to know, am I miscarrying or not? That's I, I, I don't care if you can prevent it or not. I know you can't. There's nothing that anybody can do besides rest. It's the only thing I could do. He even said, well, then why are you even here? And I said, the high-risk doctor told me to come. So I went. Um, and I said, but he also, he said, he'll be here as soon as he's done delivering. And he said, oh, okay. He said, well, I'll just have the nurse do a fetal heart rate, uh, heart rate Doppler. And I'm like, my mind going, it might not work. So the woman came in and she was so good. She's like, I'm not comfortable doing this. She's like, you're only 10 weeks. She's like, she's like, I have to be honest with you. She's like, I only have success with people that are over like 14 weeks. And so she's like, but I'm going to try. She's like, she said, but she said, if I don't get it, I'm going to, she's like, I'm going to go down to the birthing center. She's like, I'll sneak down there and I'll, we'll do it that way. And she actually said, you know, I'm going to move your room. So she tiled the doctor. So it was easier for her to get down to the birthing center. Um, so anyway, so she did it. She couldn't get it. So she went out into the hallway, came back in with another nurse. And she said, she's going to try while, um, yeah, she was going to try, the other nurse was going to try while the first original nurse was going to tr go down to labor and deliver, or go down to the birthing center and grab somebody, um, because she said they might, you know, she's like, they, this is, you know, they'll maybe be better at it. So of course the one, you know, she's going, okay, she's like, you know, she had me get up, sit back down. She's like, do a couple jumping jacks. She's like, wait, wait, that's not a good idea if you're head bleeding. She's like, I'm sorry. She's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> she was so sweet. So anyways, the doc, um, the doctor came back in and he's like, well, he's like, I don't, he's like, I don't know. He's like, what do you want us to do? I said, well, I don't know. He's like, well, he's like, I'm just going to keep you a little bit longer. He's like, just so I can hear back from the high-risk doctor. He's like, I'm waiting for him to call me back to just tell me to send you home. And I'm like, whatever. So 
the nurse from labor, well, from the birthing center came and she tried and she couldn't get it. So, but they, um, the, my first nurse came back and said, he's in the building. So, now I've had three nurses. So the first nurse and the one from the birthing center went to go find the high-risk doctor because they said he, he needs to come in here. Well, the, um, the third nurse kept looking because she's like, maybe, she's like, because if I can find it, she's like, then you can just go home or she's like, well, maybe not go home, but she's like, you can at least rest a little easier right now. So she kept looking and so the next thing I know, the high-risk doctor walks in and I'm like, thank God you're here. He's like, well, let me try. He's like, um, and I'm like, okay, he couldn't find it. He's like, but he's like, you're only 10 weeks. He's like, it's a hit or miss type of thing. He kept thinking that he was like, he's like, uh, he's like, well, he's like, the baby could be moving. He's like, or it could be, <laughs> he's like, Why? he's like, he's like, I'd rather do an ultrasound. He's like, it'd be better. So he went out into the hallway and he's like, I'm just going to get you released. He's like, cause then you can go into my office. He's like, we can just do it there. He's like, let's, let's just get you released. Next thing I know, Penny walks in. I start crying. And Penny is like, Janet, it's not... I said, you're here. What are you he doing here? She said, well, she was in the labor and deliver... Well, the birthing center, she was doing the check-ins. Because uh, she's, you know, she's trying to make some extra money. And she said, you know, she's like, as soon as I heard, you know, your name, she's like, she's like, because the high-risk sector came through that way, and she, uh, you know, because, you know, she's like, typically they have a nurse because she's like, they're going to want to do your blood pressure. She said, she asked if he didn't mind if I came up because, like she said, she's like, Janet, I know you very well. She's like, I know your chart very well. <laughs> so she's like, you know, she's like, and of course he said, sure, go on up. So it was really because she stayed with me the whole time. So we finally get released. And we go up to his office and he gets a call. And of course Penny's like, well, she kept reminding me, you know, she's like, I remember with your daughter, she's like, we couldn't find the heart rate. She's like, I think she's like, you're about 12 weeks when we finally found it with the Doppler. She's like, but your daughter's here. She's fine. She's like, so don't worry. She's like, you know, she's like, it's a hit or miss thing at 10 weeks. And, you know, she's trying to make me laugh because she, she knows that my chest grew. She's like, wow, Jen. She's like, <laughs> she's like, they look good. I'm like, thanks. Of course I was laughing. She made me feel much better. She was trying to keep me distracted. Of course, I was updating you guys on Facebook, which she had no problem. Um, but what happened, he came back into the room and he said, I got to go. Um, he said, come back tomorrow morning at, well, that, he said 7 o'clock in the morning. And I said, my husband doesn't get home until 7.30. And I said, I've got two other kids. I said that I can't just leave them with nobody in the house. He said, all right, he said, come back 7.30 in the morning. He's like, we'll do an ultrasound. He's like, he's like, I don't know if you've lost the baby yet or not. He said, he asked if I had passed any clots yet. And I said, no, I said, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot, a lot, but it was a lot to me. You know, it wasn't just a couple of drops. It was... Like when you start your period. And he's, you know, like he said, he said, just stay positive. You know, he said, just keep in mind. He's like, this, these things can happen and everything be fine. So, unfortunately, I have no answers. And I'm just, I'm holding on to what Penny said. Because I'm going to cry again because it was really sweet what Penny said. She said, you know, we have fought 
She's like, it's been a whole year you guys have been trying for this little one. And she said, you've made it farther. She said, but don't, don't give up hope because the baby hasn't given up yet either. And like she said, it has to be a little girl because she's like, Because like you said, I could have very easily, easily after our, our first marriage, miscarriage, given up and said, no, I'm done. She said, you really want this third baby? She said, so don't give up on the baby yet. So, I will update you guys tomorrow morning. As soon as I know. And just please pray. that she's okay and we will get to see her again and yes we're calling it a she because like he had said when I, I first when he first got the heart rate he said for somebody with reoccurring pregnancy loss he said he, he said, give the baby a gender. He said, that way you're not just referring to the baby as it or baby. He said, give it a gender. He's like, don't be set on that gender, but give it a gender and start recognizing it as everything's going to be okay. And I just, I have to hope everything will be okay. So thank you to everybody that is praying for us and praying for her. I will update you guys tomorrow night.